Right then, everybody. Um, it's another interview time, and uh, I've dragged somebody else uh, <laughs> into into the booth, as it were, in order to uh, in order to take uh, some some questions and uh, to uh, yeah, just generally talk about their time in the industry, um, and also uh, yeah, just generally kind of how they found it, where they are now, what their kind of trajectory through life was. Um, so. Uh, I'm obviously not full frame here. We've got somebody else here that's full frame, and you might know him from the last interview we did as the as the little black and white head. Uh, but now he's <laughs> here in full color. I'm not going to say in in 60 frames a second. That's a lie. Um, but he's definitely here. And uh, yeah, would you like to introduce yourself to the the wonderful world? Hi, I'm Mike Woods. Um, I'm a lecturer. There you go. Um, That'll do it. That's the kind of thing, yeah. Um, I should be more used to this, really. Yeah, you do this a lot, Mike. Uh, yeah. A lot of this kind of like presentation stuff. But yeah, uh, Mike Woods. And I was just saying before we actually started this conversation off, um, and I thought I'd, I'd, I'd actually iterate this point in the actual interview because it's it's kind of the, the topic of conversation that I wanted to angle this towards, is... I know that you're currently a lecturer, Mike, and I know that you, you, uh, you've you definitely got some kind of things that we can talk about with um, the way that education, um, I don't know, interesting things like how, how education keeps up with the industry um, and what changes you see in the industry, not in the industry, so, but in education, which kind of like are a knock-on effect from the industry and stuff like that, especially things with maybe how students think and their mentalities and stuff like that. Um, but a good portion of what I actually want to angle this at is um, your early development days and when you were actually developing stuff uh, for the myriad of different companies and, and freelancing as we kind of touched upon last time. Um, and I don't even know technically what time period this was. I'm going to assume it was late 90s, early 2000s, but I'm probably wrong in that, right? It's probably 2000s? or. No. Uh, well, it was um, from '97 onwards. So, technically speaking, I'd already missed the uh, the golden age, or at least that's how it kind of felt like, anyway. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess it's just a very brief thing. Let's not necessarily go deep into the '90s development at the moment. But if you could, could you give people just a general overview of, let's say, from like, let's start with the basics. Actually, what actually got you into the things that you're kind of into which have led into things like games design and um you know and i know personally from from your point of your artistry traditional art that kind of stuff which then led to you having a position in the games industry what was that early kind of uh that early kind of thing that started it all off um well uh, it's I, I guess it's just a, a number any number of different things i mean i had a not necessarily a traditional art background because I didn't I didn't actually take art at school. Um, uh, I I was always around art and I did I did do art in different capacities. Um, I, I went to a, uh, a Saturday morning session which was basically like three hours of constant art mm. for a, a number of different years throughout my teenage years because my parents basically acknowledged that I was interested in it but I didn't take it as an academic subject basically. Um, I, don't, I can't remember what, really what the reason was for that. Um, I think it had something to do with the uh, the art lecture, or art lecturer, the art teachers, um, and and wondering about what their interests were more than anything else. Because we weren't the the trouble with GCSE art is that it didn't really interest me at, at that point, and certainly A level art was more interesting to me than that. Um, what they were doing at GCSE level, but can you remember um, what it was about GCSE art that didn't necessarily um like um, let, let you make you gravitate towards art or anything it, basically i mean i don't know whether it was the same for for everybody in that um we you got like two years and in those two years you got to try out a range of different things hmm. so in the first year and second year of secondary school you kind of got to play around with different subjects and um and, and that was that and then you had to make your big decision for your third year through till um the fifth um and um basically what we did in those years was kind of like noddy nonsense basically uh, that's my opinion of it anyway uh, i it, it's one of those things where um i don't i don't think i was particularly challenged uh during those gcc years in terms of art i should have done more art definitely uh but doing gcc art would not have helped me in the slightest um uh, overall um 
I was I was already I don't know I, was, I don't know I'm gonna say I'm a weird kid I was a weird kid um but I had my interests basically um yeah. I would I would constantly be drawing different things usually either either animals or uh, random sci-fi things and that's cool. what I would would have been doing from like five onwards yeah whether it was originally I don't know things like Blake seven or something like that going going way 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 back through to um uh, the the more kind of like common star wars things and um transformers i was always big into so i was always drawing robots yeah um and, and stuff like to, that but i was gonna say just to interject for a second there um because i realized that i've, I've missed something out from this intro and i'll kind of bleed it Ooh. in here that's uh yeah you were the floating head from uh, from the last session when we were interviewing all but uh funnily enough all this time gets to be the floating head um in this interview so if there's yeah, uh the, the yeah. artistic floating head right yeah now. that's it um so Wait, all hello four. <laughs> yeah, that, there he is uh, jesus i thought you guys were like voices in my head for all this time <laughs> sorry <laughs> so yeah um uh, just so everyone's aware that if a, if you hear a third voice coming in yeah that is uh, that is all from from last week um my colleague um so if all hears anything that's kind of interesting or perks his ears up about what you're saying mike uh yeah all is here to 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 jump on you and to throttle you until he gets an answer so <laughs> which is fine that's what, <laughs> what i expected prison has changed me that's it <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll be quiet for most of this but yeah glad to be here and uh yeah um, yeah, yeah. Like sorry about, sorry hearing, about that. Yeah. I don't like it. I think we just kind of like blended into it, and I was just like, "Here's Mike. I can see him." Uh, I'm, I'm having a good time listening, man. Yeah, cool. yeah keep at it. Yeah. Uh, it. So, um, yeah. Sorry, Mike. Carry on. So that was that so, kind yeah, of I mean, uh, art. It, instead of art, I basically did um, what it wasn't called technical drawing. It was called design communication. Mm. So it was it was a lot more um, to do with uh, basically drawing orthographic views for things. And it was it, it it was technical drawing. It's uh, it's naming conventions for courses. I don't know what it's called these days. It's probably not called visual communication these days either. Mm. Um, but that's kind of what I did. So it was it was even from an early kind of like age, I was basically doing orthographic views and three D stuff with art rather than the the traditional kind of side of art. Um, really, it sounds, so it sounds almost kind of like architecture. Left that behind. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was objects in three D space and and ultimately product design. So um, it it's three D. That that was where kind of like my my interest started to move to straight away. I think it was more to do with the fact that my my dad um, or I don't I don't my mum's always been soft on those kind of things, but my father would probably just went well. There's no future in art. You you can do this, and it's far more practical. Uh, and ultimately, as well, um, I think that they had some level of aspiration for me because my my cousin was actually um, working for Land Rover at, f at like fifteen. Mm -hmm. He was doing design for product product design for Land Rover around that era, um, at that age. Mm -hmm. So they kind of hoped that I would be doing the same thing. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> as with many things, they don't work out necessarily. Uh, but it's at least at least it's a basis. I mean. On on the flip side of that as well, I was obviously more far more interested in um, uh, computer games and specifically three D orientated games as well. So, um, which is odd because obviously, um, if you're going to be playing a game in the 1980s, it probably wasn't three D mm. generally. But uh, there were a few that uh, were were kind of like really interesting. It's that whole kind of like sense of depth, even if it was faked, was. Yeah. Uh, was kind of where I was kind of interested in a lot more. I still like side scrollers and stuff like that, but um, I think that 3D was a big influence. Oh, that, uh, I don't really know, necessarily know why, but that's, I was gonna say, that's quite a bold out. statement when, when I come to think about it. Because obviously, I've known you for a very long time, Mike, and um, yeah, to say that 3D was a big influence on you uh, from an artistic point of view—that's quite interesting because it's it's it's. Yeah, that in itself is just because I guess that's that kind of like 80s kind of like technology kind of ramp up where, you know, you're seeing all of this stuff a little bit more like I, I don't want to say commercially, but you're seeing it more. Right. And like the first computer yeah, to be yeah. able to render a cube and all this kind <laughs> of stuff. And yeah, it's interesting well, that I mean, that had a knock on effect. There was I mean, there was there was definitely it was a definite change. And I'm not going to say that. You know, obviously there was there were limitations to technology and stuff like that. But uh, we had some. We started off on BBC Micros. I had an Acorn Electron at home. 
and um, basically we uh, we moved on to Archimedes uh, computers, and they were they were not really three D, but they they were capable of doing some three D in like a faceted kind of shaded way, mm. um, and that was kind of a, a bit of a, a mind blown situation to be honest. So uh, when I was moving on to uh, education at undergraduate level, then everything was changing literally everything mm. by that point through the the early 90s i mean games consoles uh, things like Star Fox and stuff like that um everything was kind of moving in in that direction and it was good it was getting good at least acceptably interesting you know, yeah. uh, with the, the jaguar console as well was was pretty mind-blowing at the time um and and that was kind of interesting to me i mean and i was still doing like orthographic projections and stuff like that of um different products and rooms and stuff like that so uh that's just that was my my kind of progression in art generally yeah i was going to say that's um, that kind of like early early conceptualization of mike as an artist i guess in those those early yeah, days I mean, yeah. I, but i was like i say i was still doing other things i mean even um my brother had a commodore 6 a commodore 60 floor four and um they had some sorry but uh, i'm some... totally into the commodore 60 floor that sounds amazing 60 floor. Get, yeah get me a commodore <laughs> yeah. 60 floor man 60 that floor. sounds great yeah. um yeah there was there was a few games on that i mean i i really like the graphically um graphical improvements over things like the acorn electron which was you know really really lagging visually mm. Um, and, and sprites were a big thing. I mean, basically on on the Acorn, if you wanted to if you wanted to make a Space Invader, for example, most of the time you would be um, you would you would basically be programming that stuff in. And although I did programming, I was never any good at it. I'm not going to lie, um, uh, you know, to make myself look good in that respect. I was never really a programmer. Um, but one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was changing the sprites in different games on the Commodore 64 because there was. I can't remember what it was called, Sprite Creator or something like that. Um, uh, and there was a series of different games, whether it was like Side Scroller or uh, like a, a shooter, or something like that, that you could just change the, the, the graphics out of. And you could basically save that as a template and reload it later on as well. Mm. Um, and and I, I was just doing all those kind of things, like hacking, hacking around with stuff um, completely in a directionless manner. Okay. But, it was it was fun at the time so just out of interest then and I, w I won't try and go any further back than this but you know you were saying that your your parents clearly saw that you had um, an interest in art and therefore that's when you went to that weekly kind of three-hour session to go and do art can you remember the thing which preceded that that thing of like oh mike's really into art but what was that thing that your parents saw? What were the what were the things that you were doing? Was it just drawing, or can you remember why you were drawing, or was it just yeah, transformers I mean, and cartoons? And, <laughs> and that kind it would of stuff? have been a lot of different things. My my mum was most happy with me when I was drawing animals and stuff like that because obviously when I was drawing robots, that's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, they they just kind of acknowledged that, and I, and I think that I mean looking back, I think that I think my parents have still got some some of the drawings that I would have done. I mean, I used to like copy pictures and um, illustrations from books and stuff like that. I'm getting attacked by my curtain. Okay. Um, yeah, um, basically that that's kind of the thing that I would have been doing, and they 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 obviously knew that I was I was capable of, of doing that um, more than anything. So they. Uh, uh, there's probably an ulterior motive to that as well because they probably wanted to get me out of the house on a saturday morning maybe yeah maybe l maybe definitely <laughs> um so uh, when when i hit like third year level in secondary school they just kind of went well you're not doing art you may as well just keep doing it hmm. um in 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 this way just to keep your you kind of eye in and that's usually that's the phrase that my dad would use a lot of just keep your eye in just keep, keep um, an eye because, in there i like yeah. that yeah because it's not it's it's not the same uh, you know technical drawing is was was fun uh, and doing doing a little bit of rendering and stuff like that with watercolors and markers and things like that was was fun but it, it it's not art necessarily it's not quite the same it's not it's not got that kind of like messiness to it it's very precise yeah. and i am a bit kind of uh, schizophrenic in in the way that I, I draw things and do things but that i can be very precise one moment and be a complete mess another it's interesting um, that you bring um, that up, though, about that whole technical aspect not necessarily being art, because that kind of mimics some problems that um, that I don't know if we will talk about them, but some some problems that um, 
that can be seen in some people these days that are learning the new the, the, the new this... learning processes and stuff but we'll get into that in a little yeah while it's definitely it's definitely a different headspace and yeah. it's definitely a different um mindset that i find that probably other people don't necessarily always have so it's a little bit like artists and programmers they're like oil and water generally they don't mix mm. um and some people just kind of like have that weird headspace where they can pretty much do both but even the difference between doing something like 3d versus doing 2d illustration is quite big mm. and yeah. i think that's that's probably worth noting generally yeah so that's kind of like where you where you kind of like got your artistic early chops, let's say. That's where you kind of like um, started to to develop your, I guess even develop your eye at a very early age to just be able to to you know sit down and, and draw for hours. Where I guess a lot of kids or some kids maybe can't sit still for two minutes. You know what I mean? I know running around and all that kind of stuff. I'm saying you didn't have that. Yeah, but... I can't. No, I can't. I can remember there was a, there was a very. I don't know why we were doing that did a lot of things when i was in primary school i don't really know why i was doing them um one one day they just sent us out to basically do some drawing outside of school and um i just sat down and i started drawing a view of like a, a projection version of the a view of the school and that was um in in primary school basically and i didn't really i didn't really know how to draw in perspective at that point but um, that's kind of what I was doing. I was drawing a building, trying to draw it in perspective. And I still don't, I don't know what it looked like. It could have been complete trash, but, you know, um, I was only little at the time. Yeah. Um, it's funny because in and... my mind, I see this little Mike Woods with like a technical pencil and everything. <laughs> and it just looks like this great architectural kind of image <laughs> when the reality of it is it was probably like Crayola and just yeah, like, yeah. it kind of looks more like that. Likely, but you were, than likely. you were maybe more close than some other people around you to, to actually getting a representation. It would probably look like that now. So, <laughs> you know, little things. Um, yeah, so they kind of like sat me outside and I, I kind of like started drawing this thing. And then... Um, before I knew it, this teacher came back to me and said, are, are, you, are you all right? Are you, are you, are you okay? You just sat there. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, are you no, no problems? No problems? Okay. And then he went away. And then a little while later, they came back and they said, Mike, everyone's done. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just drawing this thing. I'm kind I'm trying, of happy drawing this thing. Good job for you. <laughs> yeah, trying to, what's your problem? <laughs> woman <laughs> um oh, so you know li little things like that i think that um it, it i suppose there's th those little moments really kind of like tell you that yeah you've you've got you've got something might have been ocd yeah could have been a mental disorder but um ultimately it was something that probably my my obsession probably helps out to some degree yeah i mean i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that um you know, a lot of people get addicted to a lot of different things and have obsessions with different things. And for you to be obsessed with art is... It's, it's one of the healthier ones. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a bad thing. It's its certainly not a bad thing. Um, so interestingly, and I think this is kind of a comparison... Uh, sorry, not a comparison. It's more of a juxtaposition between how things are now versus uh, your path through... Uh, through the industry let's say as opposed to like you came in at one point and you came out at one point you went through the industry and that is that between the standard education that pretty much everyone gets here in the uk you get your, your primary and your secondary school and then um you know, uh, I'd say more so these days, people then go on to university in order to get a degree and then that's when they start to kind of get into careers. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but your path wasn't necessarily like that. It was more of kind of like a back to front kind of thing where the job came because of what your talents were able to, to, to provide. And then out the back end of that, you went to university and, and well, I won't go into the university part, but essentially those two things are kind of flipped for you. Uh, well, the, the, I don't think anything in my life has been a linear path. I think that <laughs> whoever, whatever, um, when people have have a, a career path that basically kind of progresses and uh, it all kind of works out for them, and 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 they can see that I used to be this and I've I've grown up to be this. Um, I mean, obviously, there's there's a progression generally, but it, mine's been a bit more hit and miss and a bit more random. Okay. Um, so what's think, what's I mean, after what's after that standard education? Then what comes kind of close we, after well, that? Well, I, I suppose we need, we do need to talk about um, university to some degree. I mean, the 
if, if you're just thinking about going to um, art, I think it, the, the thing that my dad has probably said in, in the past is always saying that art's not going to help you out in, uh, in life, basically. Um, I didn't do an art course. I did a, uh, what would probably be a, um, an internet design course, I suppose, but there, there wasn't, I wouldn't say there wasn't an internet. There was an internet. It was just gray and blue. And that's, that's what it looked like back then um so obviously they needed designers and they needed people to be doing those kind of things i was graphically minded therefore i took that course um and i kind of found out that i didn't want to do it basically i mean i, I wasn't massively interested in that kind of stuff um i mean I've, i came back to do it and I, I did eventually do some uh do some design work but um i think the main thing really is that uh you know I, I was I followed my interests more, I suppose. So we didn't really learn everything that I needed, I suppose. I, I didn't come out of university being a game artist, mm. and it's not like today in that in that regard. And in some ways, I think that's that's quite telling. I don't think there are um, it, it's telling in terms of student expectation, but it's also telling in terms of what's possible. So just to interject anything. quickly for a second. So I got that wrong then. So actually you did go to university before you went into yeah. the industry. Right, okay. I th For some reason I had it in my head that you'd gone into the industry and then out the back end of that, you'd actually gone on to do the graphic design no, stuff, just, which then I just led did, to... did the wrong thing. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did the wrong thing initially. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily the wrong thing. I mean, yeah. people always down talk education and stuff like that. But um, for me, uh, the the undergraduate degree that I did it didn't necessarily teach me what I wanted to know, but I learned it anyway. Mm. Um, I learned to use Photoshop and I learned to use 3Studio, uh, at least 3Studio Release 4, uh, which <laughs> was going to come back and bite me. I would made this decision uh, decision in the third year not to learn 3Studio Max uh, because I, I don't th didn't think that my PC was actually that capable because this was, this was also a period of time when... Um, computers were changing rapidly yeah so yeah um the the default at the time was like a, a dx 66 or something like that like a, like a processor and then they moved on to pentiums um, and intel pentiums um and you, you ended up with these these pentiums so like a 60 megahertz pentium or something like that um and then by the, within a year or so they they cranked that up to 150 megahertz or more yeah so the 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 speed increase there was massive. So um, I made the decision not to learn it, and then I ultimately had to learn it as soon as I got got into uh, the job that I got. I was going to um, say that's funny because I remember because uh, you went to university and learned Max alongside somebody who eventually taught me Max at Staffs University. And that was yeah, yeah, yeah. John there, Morton, well, yeah. There, there is that parallel. I mean, um, uh, sorry, yeah. and I always used to say that like when he was talking about Studio Max without a number He's at the talking end about it. DOS. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I used to say things like, Jesus, it's like, and I meant this in a respectful way, like we're being taught by someone who lived in like, who, who got through the 3D wars. You know what I mean? He went through World War <laughs> One of, of, of 3D packages and stuff and came out the other side and was like, I remember a time when, um, so yeah, well, knowing was, that you were around that period as well and opted to not it, go for Max, but have some yeah, knowledge was, of Studio Four. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was a big it was a big change. I mean, um, the the difference between Three Studio Max and Release Four was huge, if not only in the interface, mm. because again, everything was blue and grey, and that wow, that's yeah. what it looked like. That is pretty much it. Um, if you know any DOS packages, remember those. Looking back on it, I kind of remember it. But when I see the picture of the interface, it just seems like some sort of weird fever dream yeah, I'm, rather than a, a reality. As you're talking, I'm just going to try and get an image of that <laughs> so we can actually all see it. What was it? It was um, Studio... Uh, release 4, yeah, or Release 3. They're pretty much the same. What was it technically called full package-wise? Studio... 3D Studio 3D Release studio. 4. 3D Studio. Because I feel like it's going to be a this is your life kind of moment. Release 4 um images whoa whoa <laughs> whoa okay let me just get that on its own tab um so i'm just going to quickly uh try and uh, share my screen here um let's see what we can share here um oh so hopefully you guys can see that 
it just says watch stream apparently well yeah uh i'm recording this so you can click watch stream if you want to and you'll be able to oh, see okay, that this yeah. stuff is coming up but uh, uh yeah i got the little preview yeah so there's uh there's some yeah, business there's... oh my days <laughs> That's what I remember. I mean, that that's somebody actually doing something quite complicated. I don't know whether it's an A wing. That's but, crazy. Uh, very difficult to do anything. As far as I remember, just doing something like an edit poly or welding vertices together was actually really difficult. And yeah. what you needed to do was basically just position objects, and that was pretty much as 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 complicated as it got. Wow. Yeah. Um, Right, yeah. So I'll stop. I'll stop streaming that there. There you go, Mike. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's crazy. So um, so yeah, you opted not to learn Max then in your third I, I year. Not to, I opted not to. I opted not to learn Max. I, I learned um, Photoshop because I had to, but also because I loved it. Um, I, I, I mean, I've had an on and off love hate, love hate relationship with um, Photoshop for years, um, generally. But um, it's one of those things where I think that I just latched onto it because because i could that's just the, the the main thing about it really is that um it's drawing it's drawing and painting it wasn't really meant for that because it's a photo it's photoshop it's supposed to be there for image editing but we were using it to draw with mm. and that was fine um, back in the day so uh, we got to a whole bunch of other things but you know i was going to say so at the back end of university not thinking about games design at this point or going into games but at the back end of university what would you say that your core skill set was just the general things <laughs> cool. that my, you you know my, you know what my I mean? core well the, the core programs that i were using uh was uh we were using macromedia director Jesus, Again, Ma that's, macromedia that's, i haven't heard that in a while <laughs> macromedia director um and that was that was mostly scripting for packages and stuff like that Yep. So I've already already acknowledged that I'm not a programmer. So you can tell you can tell how well that went. Um, generally, um, Photoshop and uh, 3D Studio, and those are the things that I I kind of knew um, overall. There was there was a whole bunch of things that we learned. We learned a bit of Office and stuff like that as well, um, and a few other different packages which weren't super relevant um, overall. We, we were still scripting in. Uh, in notepad for html and stuff like that wow. so yeah there was there, there was none of n none of the complication there it was all kind of like just write it in notepad <laughs> <laughs> no It'll be uh, fine. no no kind of uh no kind of nice kind of text editors or anything like that no N no, no compilers well, not that we like knew that, of just... anyway i just remember writing a lot of stuff in notepad and and learning uh the, the markup language off by heart and i couldn't i wouldn't be able to remember it now but um that's what we used to do yeah um uh, and yeah i mean it's it was i would say that it was probably enough we we the other thing that you have to remember as well is that i wasn't i wasn't taught three studio I, I learned that myself mm. so um that's something that i did on my own uh photoshop we did get taught but i ended up doing a lot more on my own as well okay so uh again this is this is probably a situation where sometimes following your own interests will pay off mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes I, I saw a post on linkedin today that literally said something like um god i'm gonna butcher it but it was it was very much the idea of like um keep working hard because you might not be able to see it but you're working towards something like keep doing yeah. what you're doing essentially you might not be able to see that goal yet you might not be able to see that door that's about to open but if you stop and you start walking away from that door entirely um i mean it's 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 one of those things that, uh, obviously you've got to be careful about i don't know being unrealistic about things but yeah i mean if you if you know that you're into into, into something um you just need to make sure that you that there is an out at the end of it it's not just you're going to spend x amount of time fiddling around and not getting anywhere basically are you trying to tell me that all is not going to be the president of the united states I, I don't know. Is he is he American? No, but if he works hard <laughs> enough at might, it, <laughs> if he works hard enough at being American, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, not to timestamp this, but I think a lot of other people could probably make a better situation than that. What's currently going on? Now. <laughs> not to bring politics into this, but I mean, my goodness, I mean, you could you could open a lot of governance up to tender, and I think that might be a good thing. To be right? Honest, yeah. But, you know. 
little tell you, things. If this was a political show, this 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 thing would be going on <laughs> for about six hours. So yeah, let's maybe not try and uh, not try and go down. Yeah, that sure. Route. Sorry, um, I do actually. Um, I do actually have a question. If it's all right. Yeah, go um, for it, man. Sweet. Um, talking about uh, software and such. Um, I have a a short story about um back when I was at um sick form uh for a while talking about macromedia mm. i used to i used to like self train myself with flash because i was really interested in you know a bit of 2d animation and at the time that was kind of like one of the most uh, renowned ones to do 2d animation on um you know skip forward 20 or so years suddenly flash is not so much of a thing anymore to the point where adobe they I mean, have they got rid of it at this point, or is it... Yeah, well, to the point where it's not installed on my PC, so I can't actually run a lot of the stuff that I, I did when I was doing new media stuff. Right, I, so right. I, I, I had a look. Yeah, I, yeah. Had a, I had a look at my old work, and I literally can't use it because I don't have <laughs> Flash. Wow. I was do you, do say, you think these things days, like, like that... If, if oh, Flash, oh, sorry, I was going to say, if these days, if, if it comes up on a website that I need Flash, I instantly think that it's like... Like a like, what dodgy, dodgy kind of business is going on here? Like no one uses Flash anymore. What backdoor yeah. have you found? How are you getting my credit card details? Yeah, it, it might actually be a security concern. I, I don't mm. know whether it's supported properly anymore. Ugh. I've seen most things like that require like the Flash plugin now, and they're just like you can't play this anymore because the yeah. plugin just doesn't exist. But um, to get to the the question I was going to ask, like, uh, do you ever have that? that fear that especially with education in, in uh, you know in the point of the question um that software can just one day or eventually work to be redundant or you know made just completely well, null and void um yeah i, I, I can imagine i mean I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be heartbroken about things if if uh, a piece of software that i've used for for years is going to suddenly vanish um i mean it's one of those weird things like photoshop's not going to go anywhere yeah. <laughs> face, uh, shift. Uh, <laughs> face shift face <laughs> shift <laughs> bought out um, by apple <laughs> yeah i mean th th there's some, some software obviously you can't really know i mean especially if it's if it's new and it's, i mean the 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 biggest problems for probably um game art are, is going to be a choice between what quixel and substance designer or something like that um i mean that's that's going to be an arbitrary choice i don't know if anyone if there's I don't know how much of a war that is or who's who's winning or who's losing um but you know that they're, they're, they're both pretty strong right now so i think that's probably the the only main problem area i mean i don't know where 3d is necessarily going it's like is there, is everyone going to suddenly move to blender or something like that who knows mm, could, i think it's could just happen. a matter of it could happen i mean it's, like since 2.8 it's been that blender has has been blowing up quite a lot like I think a lot yeah, of the right. industry have actually been looking at it and thinking, oh wow, like this is actually like it's not quite on par with like Maya and you know the Autodesk big boys, but um, it's you know it's certainly uh, shaken up a few of the uh, more independent um, sort of uh, users well, that, of three D software. From a practicality standpoint, if it works and it's mm. it's basically uh, is it still free, completely free? Mm. Yeah, um, still. It's yeah, it's still completely free. Then it's 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 got its own advantages and mm. i don't know as from the education side of it it's more of an issue of us trying to kind of guess set or second guess what's happening and and trying to predict those those kind of trends more than anything else i mean software yeah. is software it's going to be within 20 years you're going to be um obsolete anyway so why would oh, uh, yeah you're, absolutely you're going to be well you're going to be obsolete multiple times over and you'll have to look, relearn certain things so yeah. um if if you're if you're expecting to suddenly learn one thing and then be good for the next, well, for the entirety of your career, then you need to be um, rid of that delusion quite quickly. Yeah, I, I completely, yes, yeah, well put, actually, because <laughs> I think in this industry, you can't afford to not be learning all the time. Yeah. Like, everything will change, and uh, I guess uh, the, the more the more important thing to do at the time, like you were saying, is like, well, what do you want to spend your time doing now? Like, yeah. that's the most important point, and then, you know, work out tomorrow and then the day after and yeah it's it's um it's just i think that fear at least i sometimes think it's that it's that fear sometimes of spending so much time dedicated to say a software and then realizing one day oh well ugh, i can't use that anymore um got to find the next thing and then start 
relearning from you know square one all over again yeah that's that's i I don't think it'll ever be square one though i mean basically if even if even if uh adobe photoshop vanishes next week you're still going to have other options that are going to be very similar um i mean Good old GIMP, right? I know. GIMP with a Photoshop skin, though, right? <laughs> yeah, we've 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 had uh, we've, I don't know. Me and Ollie have had uh, conversations about GIMP and and what to use and things like that quite recently. And uh, it's little things like I know that I can't do certain things in Critter and stuff like that, and he can't do certain things in GIMP, mm. um, and it's just not Photoshop. But at the end of the day, if we used it every single day, we'd know. And that's yeah. the end of it at that point. Yeah, yeah. And Very also, this, this chat is populated with three people that have all expressed an interest recently in learning Blender. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's um, if anything, yeah, that kind of shows. Shows something. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, let's actually get into the meat and veg. Where are we going? Thing. I was going to say, we're nowhere near, are we? I haven't we, even gotten to industry yet. Yeah, I was going to say like that's 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 kind of uh, that's kind of the meat and veg that I wanted to get into now. So, Mike Woods, because I, I want this on the record for the future. So <laughs> at any one point, I can go future watch history. this. Yeah, and you will you will be able to know the the makeup of a man. Um, how did it happen, man? How did it even? How did it? Was it something that you were it's... aiming at? Was it something that came out of nowhere? Give me Basically... the literal zero. Mike Woods <laughs> doesn't have any idea about the industry that's about to hit him, and then the no. ramp up after it, and like you know Basically... how it all happened. Basically, I I hit my third year, and um, there was a load of people asking me what I wanted to do, and I think that they knew that um, I wasn't that interested in what I was doing, hmm. um, and basically i'd i'd i think my housemate basically said why don't you just apply for some game stuff you're you're kind of like more interested in drawing weird cartoon characters and messing around in 3d why don't you just do that um and one of my lecturers actually said in my final year which is nice to have him say that in my final year uh you were on the wrong course you should have done illustration wow okay so yeah um you know little things like that and i was like okay well if i was on the wrong course you think i was on the wrong course then i'm just not going to do this i mean i would have accepted the job i think i i I went for a a number of different job interviews a lot of them were uh web-based and stuff like that i showed them what i had they weren't that interested Mm. um and this was like website-based jobs that you were going for sorry like web um, development. yeah th- i mean I, I i i did a lot of random bits and pieces uh, of design work and nothing um I, I i wasn't operating at a particularly complex graphic design level i was operating at a i know how to use photoshop and i'm not even going to say i'm not going to don't want to blow my own trumpet or anything like that but i was i wasn't i wasn't at a low level of photoshop even back then i just wasn't a designer okay um yeah. i could i could I can draw in Photoshop and I can paint in Photoshop and that set me aside from a lot of people, but it wasn't what people were looking for. They just weren't interested in that, that, that skill set. Um, so the main thing really was, is that I saw an advert in edge, I bought edge. Um, I applied no several way. different places. Yeah. No way. Uh, edge back in print. Edge. Well, not back in yeah, print, yeah. but back in the day of like, you know, back that, in the day. That, you know, yeah. I think it is for still the, in print. I was going to say, for the younger members of the audience, Edge is a magazine. <laughs> yeah, it's... A <laughs> magazine is a book with pages. With words and everything. With words, and yeah. pictures. <laughs> and images as well, yeah. Wow, so you were, um, you literally applied to something in Edge then? Yeah. Uh, well, I applied to, applied to several places in Edge. Uh, there was, in, I remember that Rare pretty much had a running advert in, in Edge um uh, overall uh, and there, was, there were a number of different places i think different magazines that you could do that i mean there, there, there's a, there's a i think was it was it develop or other other magazines as well that um don't exist anymore basically um that you could find games jobs in that you didn't have to go through recruitment agencies like you probably do now i think that's probably been more formalized overall i don't know whether anybody even advertises anymore in the same way i mean I don't I don't want to say that nobody reads anymore but I don't think that uh, there's a magazine that you could read about the games industry these days I think more so these days and correct, and correct me if anybody thinks I'm wrong here but more so these days I think people are looking for those jobs in the pool which is the internet right 
the internet is yeah, the well, big if, job if, board if, and you can if, go if, anywhere if you, and... yeah if you if you go to uh you know the, the, the any any different website for recruitment um you're going to find a wider range than i would have found in edge back in 1997 mm, of course yeah um, and course. and they will be um worldwide not just local in uk as well yeah so the advantages of the modern era are that you've got more opportunity to some yeah. degree. Um, so, so you're flipping through this, edge. And I, and I found this, find these, these jobs. And one of them was for a company called smart dog and it had an interesting little character logo. And I was like, these guys look cool. I'm going to apply to these guys. And, and that was, that was pretty much it. Um, I went to the, the, uh, the interview and, um, I obviously got interviewed by the art director at the time. And um, Did, was there a position turned... that you went for, or was it just like come and work for it was, Smart Dog? I think dog, it was like, like 3D 3D artist or something like that. I, I okay. think maybe. Um, and yeah, they. I found out that I had had uh, not necessarily. I had a lot of things in common with the art director, um, but also over the the turn the, the, the kind of years that i've been at university i'd actually been playing a lot of games that um not only he was interested in but also games that had been produced in leamington which is where i ended up mm. so it, there was a there was a, a number of different studios in leamington spa um, and they were all putting out um, different games one of the big ones was something called big red racing and we as, as a household because we set up our own network uh, way back in the day. Uh, we, we used to play Big Red Racing after getting drunk at the Union. And it was probably some of the most fun as a, as a gaming experience you can possibly have. Yeah. Um, because it, it, was, uh, it, was just, it was just cartoon racing. Um, and there was a number of t- things that you could do to really screw up your opponents, which was um, what, what made it really fun because uh, it was a bit random. It was that there was no guarantee that you would win, basically. Yeah. Uh, so little things like that is that when you find out that, oh, um, you know, these guys down the road made this and they'd be really happy to talk to you about that in the pub because we'd see them in the pub as well later on. So you'd, you'd see the developers um, in the pub. Well, yeah, everybody. Uh, not necessarily for the, on, in my interview, but uh, once you were, once I was there, everybody kind of knew each other. Sorry, I thought you were talking about when you were at yeah. university, you used to get drunk. No. And then, like, oh, no. that's smart well, dog well, right there. No. <laughs> Um, well, that's the, I'm trying to connect the, the two things. So basically, um, we we would play a lot of games that, like I say, were developed in Leamington, mm, yeah. and we didn't know that at the time. I didn't definitely didn't know that. I'm I'm pretty sure that the guys that I lived with didn't still don't know that. So that's news to them now. Wow, yeah, uh, crazy. But, uh, but that was that was just the reality of uh, the situation. Um, they did give me an art test. I remember they gave me an art test what, just to what prove myself. Um, I can't really remember. I remember something to do with, uh, I think, I think I made a tank for them or something like that. Um, but I can't, again, this is hazy watercolor memories again, like going through the, 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 the mists of time to, to figure that one out. I think they just asked me to build something and texture it. And, and then they were questioning about, you know, texture quality and stuff like that. Mm. And so I did that and, um, yeah, I got offered. A job based on that um i mean i mean obviously as well it wouldn't have been that complicated because i was using um, three studio release four mm. so i didn't really have the opportunity to do anything that complicated mm. um and they they offered me the job knowing that which is probably not something that would happen these days mm. um you've got to remember that back at that point in time uh hardly anybody knew the software Right, so and you were a unicorn, they, they, they essentially. Were, uh, well, it's, it's not necessarily that you're a unicorn. It's just that, oh, you've got some skill. You, you've you proven that you can actually learn this stuff. So just learn this package instead, and you should be okay. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that was kind of the way that it was working. And I assume that before that point, that it was even more, more so give them the opportunity. But I... Yeah, these days that has been taken away, <laughs> uh, and I would say that everybody is very much more harsh about uh, their criticisms of whether or not work is any good and that kind of stuff. So I guess um, that curve kind of the, goes with the quality of games, yeah. though, and the quality of media these days. Like you've got to be on top of yeah. the game, haven't you? 
the opportunity um, isn't isn't going to be there for you if you uh, if you don't literally know what you need to know. Mm. Uh, and that's that's it's more telling that um, people can leave education now literally knowing what they need to know. Yeah, I think so. Things have definitely changed in that regard anyway. But um, there was there was no no consideration in 1997 for ever starting a games career. At least I don't. I don't know. I don't course, know. Yeah. Don't know any university that would have been doing games development in quite that way, especially from the art side. They might have been doing programming. So what was? Um, so you started off as? Uh, could we argue if we had to put a title on it now, it would be something like a three D generalist? Is that kind of what you would say your title um, was? Or very, you... very much so. I I would be. I mean, the volume of work would vary but obviously environment if you were making an environment then that's that was still always going to be the more more work mm. um generally um obviously character work was hard but it, it's not anywhere near as hard as it is these days i was gonna this is what i wanted <laughs> um, to kind of get into like so you weren't necessarily pigeonholed to be a character no. artist back then or a vehicle artist or an environment artist you you were a 3d generalist and you did whatever needed to come over whatever came yeah. over your desk that's what you needed to make pretty much and that was the that was the same for it was true of anybody in the studio as well so all the art team i mean we, we had a 2d specialist who was doing UD, ui stuff um uh and several different people that ended up doing uh ui stuff but if you were on the 3d art side you'd be making characters you'd be making cars we, we made environments we made uh, uh tennis courts and stuff like that as well as large scale large scale environments so you pretty much did everything mm. uh, it didn't really matter what the subject was which is again entirely different from what it is now yeah and i was going to say me and ollie coming from a, a you know a company currently where we're where our staff numbers are in the hundreds uh what was the staff makeup of uh, smart dog then when you walked in the, in the front door <laughs> i think it was it was um it was difficult to say because we started off we started off on one floor and we ended up taking two floors and we were segregated programmers and artists uh, in the end then we had some reception staff but I, it's got to be I think I added it all, all up once upon, once upon a time. I don't, can't remember whether it was around about 30 people or less. It's I thought you were going to say it. like 70 to 80 then, not in, 30. In, in the end, I think, I, think it was, I think it was a surprise because there was, there was at least like, um, there was at least 10 people for, per floor. So there's at least 20 people. And then we, we also had, uh, had our bosses, our, like, our, our big bosses, mm. um, and then reception staff and a few other people. Um, and at different times of uh, Smart Dog's life as well, that there were there were other people that joined us. Um, I, and I, if they were management, I never really knew who they what they were up to. <laughs> so right, okay. it's uh, it, it's just one of those things. Um, it's got to be under thirty people, but it's got to be over twenty. Okay. And did your job change from three year generalist over time? Did it evolve, or did what did you do different things as it went on? Did you get more refined, or how did you find no. that the job went on as time went on at a place like Smart Dog? I, I, again, I don't know what the political things were in the background, or or what the company was left in as a state wise, or why it was left like that. I just interested more about how your job evolved more than anything. I mean, it was it, well. I mean, I. I had I had career advancement in terms of money and stuff like that, and that 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 was good um, overall. It certainly helped me buy a house and stuff like that. Um, I think this was probably at my at me at my most naive as well. So I wasn't really aware of how things really worked out. I just knew that we were, we expanded. We definitely expanded after our first few games. Uh, we did uh, a load of ports basically. Mm. So we were basically porting from n64 to uh, playstation stuff like that uh, and hopefully to fund a, a bigger project of our own which ultimately was um, something called downforce uh, which was like a, a a racing f1 game that included damage which was kind of more fun than the standard f1 games that uh, were out at that point in time or even today mm. so they're more more sim related than uh, anything else um but yeah we, we started off relatively small and we got bigger and that's probably as about as much as my knowledge of that that period of time is mm. uh really uh there were obviously there were problems towards the end and stuff like that because uh you know money was always a factor and um it was 
you know, it's always difficult to say what's happening with a game studio. I mean, like I say, I was at my most naive at that point, so I could probably have thought that thought the problems through a little bit more and maybe had a better exit strategy. Yeah. Um, but um, ultimately, uh, it, it was what it was. It was a good place to work, and uh, it was it was definitely fun times had by all i mean it, it was it was an era certainly i still think i missed the era i think that um what what happened before was far more interesting i think based on the stories that uh, my bosses would have to tell me and stuff like that but um uh, you know we had our we had our moment in the sun basically so what uh just before we move away from smart dog then and you know the kind of the end of that and moving on to the next things in you know your, your career um what are some of the games that mike woods can be attributed to um there are there are a few different i don't know whether my name even comes up on on those kind of things but uh, we worked on a, a range of different uh titles i mean uh, my bosses uh they they were coming off the back of something called breakpoint i think that's something that they made for um codemasters at that point so the first games that they were making were tennis tennis games and they they made something called tennis arena which was kind of like a tennis game mixed with street fighter which was fun <laughs> And they they kind of wanted to um, do something a little bit more with that, um, and uh, we ended up making uh, Tennis All Stars '99 uh, for for different consoles. Uh, we like to say we did a load of ports, such as uh, uh, Roadsters for Titus. Uh, we, we we made a port for some, a game called Ubic, which was uh, from PC. And um, ultimately, a game called 360, which was not necessarily well received, uh, but it was a, like a racing game uh, of our own. And ultimately, Downforce, which I think I still think was probably the. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily know what was going on behind the scenes, but um, and ultimately, Downforce could have gone somewhere. Was if Downforce made a sequel, the downfall? Downf I don't think downforce was necessarily the downfall. I think that the the main downfall was transitioning from PlayStation One to PlayStation Two. I think that okay. was uh, a big problem, and and certainly uh, at that point in time as well, when I lost my job and the company went under, there was a lot of companies having the same problems. Okay. Um, and and it was all to do with um, complexity of development and obviously money. I think. Is that they couldn't they couldn't do the the tight turnarounds that I think that they they kind of knew how to deal with PlayStation One and and they could make a they could turn a profit yeah. um, on PlayStation One PlayStation One but they couldn't manage it on PlayStation Two. I was going to say predominantly uh, then where were most of your ports going? Like if you could if you had to pull it out of your you know out of a hat like what what was predominantly the console that you were porting to? Oh, there wasn't one. I mean, um, we we did Game Boy, uh, we did PlayStation, we did uh, N sixty four, and so it kind of ran the gamut of that that kind of early age uh, before before things started to get really complicated. I suppose. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we come out the back end of Smart Dog, Mike Woods. I mean, okay, let's go through this. Actually, how did that even happen? Like, was it just one day? Hey, you're not turning up for work today, or hey? Uh, it was. It was a, a, an interesting thing. I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure. To be honest, like I say, I was, I was at my most naive back then, so I wasn't really aware of what was uh, really happening necessarily. Um, we had a lot of ties to um, French companies like Titus, um, and I think that. I think that Titus was having financial problems as well because they they kind of went under at uh, at a later point I think as well. Mm. So they they were looking to basically um, I think uh, when we knew about it I think that they were looking to liquidize assets to make sure that they could keep running. At one person at one point we were being paid directly from France rather than um, okay. via the UK, which was not good because the 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 actual exchange rate was nonsense at that point as well. Um, so that wasn't helping us sell ourselves at that point as well. Mm. Um, but I think that they, they just wanted to, I think they, they knew that they were having trouble and they wanted to make sure that they had um, titles which were marketable. I think that's all they, 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 worried, they were worried about. And, and basically they, they made the decision to cut us loose. 
and okay. that was the end of it. But they they were having trouble. Obviously, uh, we were having trouble as a, as a result of that. Um, there were things going on behind the scenes that I only heard as rumor, so I'm not going to really kind of repeat those. Um, there are better people to be talking about that kind of thing than I am. I'll okay. say I was at my most naive at that point. Um, so uh, I think it's just mainly that there was there were there was quite a few problems money wise, and l- like I say, a lot of other studios were having similar issues at that point in time. Um, as well, which led to my other problems of employment after that point as well. I was going to say, so let's get into that then. So you 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 come out of the back end of Smart Dog. Uh, what does Mike Woods do in the interim up to the the point that you're at right now, uh, which is lecturing in, in games design? Uh, well, I I spent a bit of time. Well, I spent a bit of bit of time unemployed um, slash freelancing. Okay. Um, generally, and I always say that it's um, freelancing is a, a euphemism for being unemployed as a general rule um at, at different points um usually just directly afterwards you've got to do something for some money you've got to try and see what your options are basically um i didn't spend uh a lot of time worrying about it at that point but eventually i started just applying for anything really um i, I kind of like went okay well maybe i can maybe i can do a segue back into um what i was actually taught at university i know i didn't enjoy it all that much but um maybe maybe the second time around it'll be more more interesting in a work environment as well it's not like um i don't have an interest in graphic design or anything like that it's just that what i was doing at university was not super interesting Mm. um and so i went to work for this 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 new media company called freestyle and they should still be in existence i think they're slightly called as called something slightly different uh these days but um they just did a lot of random stuff which was quite fun actually to be around because it was random it was um you, one one week we well i was mostly hired to do 3d and usually it was to do with um vehicle configurators and stuff like that which were mostly flash but it was on my side it was rendering things which was a, a, something that was quite fun um overall it was something that i hadn't really done before or not much of anyway since university because Obviously, as game developers, you don't use certain parts of the software. Something that um, the students don't do as well is that they, you know, the little things like in, in 3 Studio Max or Maya, uh, you probably want to learn some rendering as well. But um, most of your day-to-day life is not going to be rendering things in the games industry. Yeah, and then uh, you, but it's kind of uh, useful. I was going to say, and then and then so after this 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 interim period, how long would you say that interim period was from Smart um, Dog to lecturing? uh yeah i don't know it might be four or five years something like that. i can't i can never remember whether it was 2009 uh, i might have lost my job in 2003 or 2004 i can't remember off the top of my head mm. um and then i went to work like say at freestyle uh and then it would have been four or five years until lecturing basically okay and um, what kind of got you transitioned from say uh working at freestyle into lecturing was there another another kind of like oh you know i've been let go or is there is is this a i need to change of pace yeah i mean there was there was there was a lot of rumblings behind that um the again i i assume that um from freestyle's point of view uh we we did a lot of pitch work but we didn't get a lot of return on that pitch work and so um supporting the staff that they had was not going to be working out that's it's a hard life um doing doing the web stuff and doing design stuff is the constant pitching and it's not just that it's probably like a service as well so you're 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 trying to pitch a service rather than just a website or a design piece and and you've got to win those clients and if you don't win those clients you've got no money basically (laughs) yeah right yeah okay so then um Um, yeah so you transition then out of freestyle and you get into i did a bit of of free free freelance did a bit of freelance yeah in the middle there um, I actually worked for Freestyle longer than I was actually working there, purely because I was doing freelance for them. Okay. Which didn't really make sense, make that much sense to me at that point in time. But at least they gave me some money, so you know that was that was fine. That's good. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So uh, Smart Dog, Freestyle, freelancing technically with Freestyle yeah and, and some other other projects potentially other bits and bobs yeah 
and Random, then... it was actually quite it was quite interesting because I, I could have probably if i'd stuck with it i could probably have gone gone freelance completely is that um i was i was kind of at a tipping point of deciding what to do because i was getting money I, I wasn't making a lot of money but i was making enough money to live on mm. which was and i was getting my name out there which is not something i've ever had before was it stressful um though? It wasn't stressful. It, it was probably the opposite of stressful. Um, I mean, I think my, my mother often says it about me. It's like, you and your father are just the same. You don't care when you've got money. You don't care when you don't have money. Um, so I, it's not, it wasn't a stressful experience. I mean, usually the, the worst part of doing freelance stuff is waiting. And that's not stressful. Waiting's not stressful. Obviously, not having the money is is an issue when you don't have the money literally you can't feed yourself and that kind of stuff but i wasn't hitting that point yeah i was just kind of subsisting but the the interesting thing about that is that the more work you do the more kind of like widely known you become in those circles mm. and eventually you get people coming back to you and saying do you want to do this and that's that was kind of the position almost that i was in i think i could see it okay I could see it happening so what stopped that and what uh, made you kind of go for a position in education then? Um, basically, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I planned for, certainly. So it wasn't my idea. Mm. You, can, you may notice that outside influences forced me into different roles rather than uh, my, my, my overarching <laughs> evil maniacal plan. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, one of my... Um, university friends who who hadn't left staff university he'd uh, he'd basically stayed on as um it services basically and he'd been there since since 1997 when we all graduated he basically said mike there's a job role you be, you're perfect for it you should go for that uh, and so i applied and i didn't expect to be taken seriously to be honest but i mean this is it. this is my my attitude generally is i never never expect to be taken seriously and it's always nice to suddenly be taken seriously and incidentally the um, year that you got that position was the year that i started staff university i know um well th there you go that's the, the the best year of my life <laughs> the convergence where it all came together um, yeah where everything everything came together yeah so i don't necessarily want to jump too much into staff's university as a thing because i kind of want to keep this as 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 game development um oriented as possible but um without necessarily talking too much about lecturing per se um what are the things that you if i were to give you a soapbox for a moment mike and say dangerous, dangerous. Uh, right yeah if i were to give you a soapbox for a moment and say you know you've seen the industry in the 90s you hear me talk all the time about things that are, you know, that are going on or things that I'm doing or th or my opinions of kind of how the industry moves. And I've been in the same position that you've been as well. I've, I've also been a lecturer, but I've, uh, as I say, you've gone from smart dog to transitioning into a lecturer and I went from a lecturer to transitioning into the industry. So arguably we've got the bookends there of either side of this thing in the middle, which is, which is lecturing and then either side of development. But if I were to give you a soapbox right now to just kind of say, you know, what are your kind of thoughts about um, not so much the educational system, but more so, I guess, about the people that go through it and their, their maybe their expectations or how they treat uh, games courses in relation to how we know the industry is now um or how how they how they treat the the information or how they treat say the software that they want to use versus what they should be learning i know we've had a couple of discussions about this but i, I don't want to necessarily direct you i just want to hear kind of like what your thoughts about all of this are and this isn't slamming education this is more just a general kind of you have a, a broad wealth of knowledge of knowing these bookends and knowing, you know, how I talk and my opinions and, you know, your opinions from back then and how things have changed and the trajectory more so than I do. So, yeah, what, what are your opinions on just education in, in that kind of sense? Well, I suppose um, expectation is key more than anything else. Um, I came into undergraduate education with literally no expectation whatsoever and no plan as to what I was going to do necessarily. Um, I just had this, um, this idea that, I mean, again, I, maybe I should have taken industrial design and, and then I would have ended up like my cousin, but it's, 
it, it's it's very difficult to say. I mean, I, my education experience was very atypical in that I basically did what I wanted and I got a job that I wanted, hmm. which probably wouldn't happen these days hmm. um, um, overall. And like, like I say, I didn't have any expectations about where I was going, whereas most students these days have very specific expectations. Um, and there are some... Uh, problems with that in terms of uh, what their expectations are and what they are actually managed to achieve over that period of time because the the industry itself is not very forgiving mm. uh, and they i think that students very quickly uh see that um i don't know if if they're if they're not going to make it then they're they're very unhappy very quickly um and managing a lot of the time it's not necessarily about making sure that um there there is what is effectively an exit velocity for a student into straight into industry it's more about teaching them what they need to know based on their current needs mm. uh, and that's that's quite a difficult one to manage um uh, overall because that's um they 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 <laughs> They will have expectations and certainly i mean they're, they're they're kind of more wise to the world in some ways because of that expectation is that they they know what software they're supposed to be getting taught for example uh, or at least the 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 software that uh, job roles ask for now um as we've we've had a conversation about software um, previously and basically saying you probably don't want to worry about software necessarily I and mean, i don't for example i don't see much in the way of differences between photoshop and substance designer for example um, most of the key uh, elements for, for those two packages are very much the same and they're very much based on each other i mean and things like 3d coat and, and other things as well layers are pretty much default uh, blend modes are, are, are pretty much the same you need to learn to use levels and curves and all these other different things and it doesn't really matter what package you actually learn those in because if you learn them in one, you'll be able to implement them in the other one. I just want to back you up um, with this as well, Mike, because we've had this discussion prior. And I mean, again, I can actually relate this to a situation which has been very, very close uh, to, to, you know, to this time frame, which is uh, me and Ol going in and starting to learn Blender from our own respective kind of disciplines. Now, Ol knows uh you know a lot of traditional animation stuff inside of maya keyframe animation curve editing stuff like that and the majority of that first session that we both had sitting down was figuring out where that stuff is so we could animate <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean all of those fundamentals are still there it's just finding where that stuff is to animate myself as well coming from a technical perspective i don't you know i learned python if I walk into Blender, okay, I've just got to look at the API, but by the end of a 20 minute session, I've got a full list of all the objects in the scene with their translations, their rotations, uh, their visibilities, and I'm getting all of this kind of information out from Blender. I just wanted to back you up on that point because, <laughs> you know, if I, if I, I think I've said this before, but if, if we hired somebody for say like a mocap position, and they had this constant win button that they downloaded from somewhere, which does everything that they want to, which is essentially, to some degree, the tools that I kind of write these days. It, are, it is those kind of pipeline tools that speed everybody up. But the second that one of my tools, you know, fails for whatever reason, because of an update, or because of a this or because of a that, if somebody can't do something by hand, then that's worrying for me. That's, that is a big worry. Um, I mean, a motion capture example would be just to characterize a skeleton. Like, sure, we have a lot of things that do that for you. And it'll just, you know, all of that stuff that you'd normally do by hand can be done lickety schlick, one button, there it is. It's out the back end. You get ready to, to do your solving or whatever. But if I have to say to somebody like, hey, um, I'm working on this particular tool at the moment because we've had an update to Motion Builder or whatever and the tool doesn't work. I need that person to be able to do this stuff by hand just in case. And again, maybe I, I, when we look at it from an artistic point of view with like Photoshop and substance and stuff like that, I don't know because I'm not on that part of the, of the pipeline, right? I'm not on that part of the artistic you know, side of, 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 um, of like say tools creation or stuff like that. But I can only imagine that some studios have had situations where they're like, oh, we can't actually use substance for this thing that we want to do. 
Like, everything else in the game, like, yeah, fine, we want to do it for all of this stuff, but, like, this particular aspect of this thing, it's stylized in a certain way, it's got a certain feel or a certain look. All of a sudden, everything that you've been leaning on to kind of get you where you're trying to go is all moot. It doesn't make any sense to use it anymore. And then all of a sudden, to me at least, you kind of wish that you'd learnt about light and shadow. You kind of wish that you'd learnt about <laughs> hue and saturation. You kind of wish that you'd learnt about this stuff. Because, as you said just, Mike, right, you're constantly going out of date, right? You're constantly having to try and fight this battle to, to constantly be up to date. The one thing that I could argue that hasn't gone out of date, and this is in every principle that I've seen, is the fundamentals. Like a keyframe, an interpolation type, a way that you ease in and ease out. If there's a tool that helps you to do that, fine, cool, speeds you up a little bit. But to not know what the fundamentals are of the button that you're pressing is a scary thing to me. It is a really scary thing. So... That's my soapbox put moment over. I just wanted to back you up on that because I, I truly do believe that. Well, it's, it, it is just one of those things. I mean, ultimately, um, I've, I've kind of built up a lot of knowledge. Uh, and and there, there are a lot of problems that, um, that we see from students and certainly that we have just in terms of trying to teach people in three years what they need to know. Mm. Um, because we don't have any guarantee about what they've learned at college, for example. I mean, I, I started my career off working in 60, 60, uh, 64 by 64 textures-ish mm. um, in 16 colors. And I'm, I'm used to basically working in a palette and, and stuff like that and, and, and basically different bit depths as well. Yeah, I mean, These are basic things that um, I think we take for granted a lot of the time. Um, and, and certainly they make a big difference depending on which software that you're using, mm. uh, images or, um, or making adjustments, especially something like Substance Designer or Photoshop. Um, and they have knock-on effects to you before as well, depending on if you want to use height maps and things like that. There's, there's, there's a whole raft of issues, but it's a lot of, a lot of those kind of like core principles. I'm, I'm pretty sure that most students don't even know what an 8-bit register is, and therefore they don't even know what 8-bit images are. Uh, and 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 things like that. Um, they they just know which which thing they need to. Well, they don't even necessarily know which thing to use at which point in time. Um, but it, it's kind of the, the, it, there's always a bit of a tension between how much underlying stuff do you teach and how much specific stuff do you teach. Yeah. And and as a general rule, most students will surface learn to get to an end result. And I suppose that. Um, in some ways, that's perfectly fine. I don't. It just depends on <laughs> on how much you need to know as a, a junior artist, I suppose. And th that's probably one of our biggest problems. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a junior artist or a junior animator or a junior programmer or whatever. Is that that's the question you need to ask? It's like what's okay for them not to know. Mm. Um, and um, if you know more of the un the underside of things, you will start to see. Uh, patterns in 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 other software sort of uh, solutions i suppose yeah you'll start to understand why why you need to do certain things and um start to see that there's a there's there's a a kind of a, a rule set that keeps cropping up a lot of the time even if it's like terminology it's like this word keeps cropping up what why do why do they keep using that word <laughs> and it's like oh well that just means we're gonna, we're gonna have to do this and if you can understand i mean just basic things like um, how to um, split objects up with um, smoothing groups and UVs and stuff like that and project things properly. If you don't understand what projection is, and it's it's quite a difficult uh, thing to get your head around for somebody who's not done that kind of thing before, and certainly it gets more complex over yeah. the, over three years. What does that mean for the person um, that uses a projection button inside of Substance, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I, 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 I mean... There's this stuff in um, in ZBrush like UV U, a, a UV tiles or whatever like that like just projection for itself and uh, uh, obviously Substance Painter has got its own uh, triplanar projection and even UE4 has got its own triplanar projection these days. Um, so why would you ever want to just map things? Mm. Um, I think I think there's the, the 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 sheer scope of what could be done under the heading of game development is probably huge i mean i like say i got taught nothing 
pretty much. I got to Photoshop. That's fine. I, I'll, I, will, I will admit that I, I took that away from university um, and it didn't hinder me whatsoever. If I went away, left university with those skills now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing games development, I don't suppose. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I think that's the difference um, uh, overall. But I think that students um, probably need to accept that there is complexity there that they probably don't see uh, past I need to be I need to be getting taught Max and Meyer, or I need to be getting taught Substance Designer, or I need to be getting taught X, Y, or Z, because that could change next year, and we'll all be using Blender. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess as uh, a... and... go on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to say that that's that's the kind of like core underlying problem, and you you've got to think about what you can take into other areas uh, more, because I I took what I knew, and that was enough but it's a very small amount in comparison to what is required these days. Yeah. Uh, a very small amount. And it's not about software. It's about all the underlying experience that you need. Um, so just to kind of wrap up here, because we're, we're coming to the top of the hour and I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice time to kind of like wrap it up there. We've kind of gone through a lot of different topics and a lot of different things there. And I think we've done a, a nice kind of spread as I say, more so over your game development and your early history, getting into that. Um, for somebody, and again, I know this is based more so, actually you're in a very, you're, you're in a, a great position to answer this because you're in the educational system at the moment. You are, you are kicking out folks, not literally kicking them out. I meant like kicking them out the back end. So, you know, <laughs> they can go if into the real world and stuff like that. They are um, output into the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as I say, you do speak to me uh quite a lot and you you know you've spoken to ollie uh there's other people in the industry that you know who are currently like running that stuff what is a piece of advice that you would give to somebody i guess either pre-university or is currently sitting in university thinking like i'm going to be the next whatever i'm going to be i'm going to be a great character artist one day and has that self-affirmation for themselves like i'm not looking for you to cut a man down mike but I'm looking for I'm looking for looking for Mike Woods, good old age kind of like I'm going to give you a piece of advice and this is one that you can take to the bank kind of thing. Well, I suppose it's th the main thing really is that um, you should you should follow your passions uh, to a degree. Is that if there's if there's something that you want to know to get you to a certain place, then you you just just learn it. It doesn't really matter. Um, in, in what capacity you're, you're doing that. Um, every little helps uh, more than anything else. I mean, I, I did a bit of traditional art. I did um, uh, the 3D projection stuff that we used to do in technical drawing. I, I made sprites. Um, and that, that adds up to something that um, is useful because it, it builds understanding. Mm. Um, if you sit there and you expect a, a, any course, whether it's going to be at a college level or even even earlier uh just as secondary school or whatever uh, up to university if you're expecting them to just magically make you into something then that's not going to happen especially if the fundamental underpinnings are not there already if you've got no clue about what's happening around you then it's going to be an uphill struggle for three years at university uh, that's just the reality of the situation is that you need to have something um, we do our best to take people from zero to hero but it's, I think it's not necessarily to the detriment. I don't want to be detrimental to any students. Um, it's not because of them a lot of the time. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Sometimes it really is. Uh, but um, three years is a very short period of time. And it might seem like a long period of time when you're a student because three years is a long period of their life. Um, but it's not a long period of time to, to learn about games development in any capacity. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what field that you choose. It's always going to be complicated. And if you've got the, the weight of information behind you, you're going to have a much easier time of it, um, overall. Yeah. And that's the best thing. That's the best thing you do is that just make sure that if you know you want to be somewhere and you want, and, and I don't know the world, especially the internet, if the internet is, is telling you that you need to learn to sculpt or, um, use substance or whatever, then learn it yeah uh anything even if you sit in class and and think oh well i know all this 
that's great. It means that it's just a reaffirmation that you're on the right track because sooner or later, something's going to be said that you have no clue about whatsoever. And if you can build that understanding based on your previous knowledge, then you're okay. But yeah, if you start not knowing things, then it's very unlikely that you're ever going to know those things. I was going to say, I think at, least, kind of, at least in the time frame. I think that kind of summarizes yeah. down to that kind of idea of it's better to be caught out by one thing than 10 things at once, right? Yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, there's, there's something to, th- to to the whole kind of like throwing yourself in on the deep end, but, you know, some people drown, right? that's that's all that's all it is yeah, yeah. um it's it's always nice to hear a success story but um anything that you can do to mitigate uh well improve your 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 chances uh you should be doing yeah uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter whether you're you're listening to this video as uh i don't know primary school yeah know, probably are, not really your target audience um secondary school or, i have no target you know, college audience, or wherever yeah <laughs> It doesn't matter what year, you know, how old you are, or whatever. Just, just do what you need to do. Just yeah. find out what you need to do and and have a go at it. Uh, it doesn't need to be even the best thing in the world as an output. Just have a go at it. Beautiful. Look at that. That is a uh... Mike. If you say another word, I think you'll ruin it. That was that was yeah, most uh, likely. That was it's, that it's was a go beautiful send off there. there. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure if we've uh, still got all. I know we've just gone past the hour, and I know he's, 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 some... I, I can't yeah, hear him yeah, when yeah, he's, when he's asleep. I have been politely muted and listening all this time. Oh, very, <laughs> very nice, very nice. Uh, did you enjoy Mike Woods' story there? Of, uh... Very nice and beautifully put as well. So yeah. yeah. Um, is is there anything that you would like to uh, to ask Mike before I let him get on his merry way, or are you uh, are you are you happy to hold oh, your peace? All, all, all good here. I think I think everything that you you went over. Is... Pretty much nodding and you know. Awesome, awesome. Throwing well, some up, so yeah. I yeah. thought I thought we were gonna plumb some depths, and I was a bit worried to be honest. About. <laughs> there's, there's some things that um, I can't even remember what happened. Well, we got about ago, so. we got about forty five minutes in, and it was at that point that you were <laughs> yeah. like, "So I got I got into drawing, and I was like, oh god." Um, <laughs> oh, god. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever do in art, Mike? Oh, What's yeah, the weirdest <laughs> thing you've drawn? Have you drawn a penis before? <laughs> <laughs> don't answer them. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> You think that's getting cut, but it isn't. Um, <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Um, there he so, was. Yeah. You muted himself, and it all went downhill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is why I've been muted all this time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to say thank you to to both of you for your time, just to spend the time to to both listen and to retell some old stories. Um, I'm sure if anything kind of comes back up, which um, which could be Smart Dog related, as you were talking about Smart Dog then and talking about all the games, I thought it would be really interesting for us at some point to uh, acquire a copy of some of these games that you've got your name to and play them in I, front of you. I've got I've got copies of a lot of games actually. Um, I don't know where they necessarily they are. If you, if you've got a console that will actually play them, that's well, the we question. Can, we can definitely figure that. Stuff we can out. make that happen. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do the tennis racket, Mike? Did you do the person with the ball? Did you do the net? <laughs> it's going to oh, be a lot of critique. What, you made this? Oh, yeah. God, what are you thinking? And what you, you graded me? Like, yeah, you oof. graded me. Oh, God. No, I thought I thought that would be quite fun. A bit of a blast for the past for you. I think that would be interesting. Um, so, yeah. Um, thank you very much, Mike, for uh, for joining us for the, for the for the power hour and for, for getting all of that stuff out. Again, I have it on record now, so you, I will always use your words against you. Um, yep. And uh, <laughs> thank you all for, for joining us here and uh, oh, you know, lending thanks for having me. And, yeah, and having, yeah, having yeah. some input. It's been um, an absolute delight. Uh, Kojima's next week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Far more oh, okay. I've sent Get him that the email. Son of a gun in air right now. <laughs> I've sent him the email. He'll he 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 won't reply. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So just thank you again for taking the time. Thank you all. Um, and yeah, you've been listening to the smooth sounds of Mike Woods. Um, Mike, you got. <laughs> I'll, I'll put you on the spot. You got anything you want to promote, Mike? Got any? Got a YouTube channel there. Got a Twitter feed. Got a Mike Mike Woods Home Movies dot com. Uh, what what was the what was your movie Mike Woods movie blog? Movie blog. That's it. Mike, Mike Woods movie, movie, movie blog. blog. Does anybody have blogs these days? I mean, I don't know. Um, no, I'm I'm an <laughs> island of me, and that is it. <laughs> Closed borders. Find me nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh right then, guys. Well, yeah. Yet again, thank you very much, and uh, it's been a pleasure to sit with you both. 
Thank you very much. Yeah. See you later, guys. Goodbye.